People these days are creating absolutely incredible things using only CSS. In this video, I want to showcase a number of CSS games. That's right, CSS games, because people are actually building interactive, playable, 3D adventures and whatnot games using only CSS with no JavaScript whatsoever. In this video, I will showcase six of those games and we will even dig a little bit behind the scenes to see what's in the code. So let's dive right in. First up, we have The Mine, a Node.js CSS only adventure created by Jamie Coulter. And this is actually a classical 90s style adventure where you explore the world and you have to solve a number of puzzles to actually get to the finish. First, you are in the dark and you have to figure out what's happening. You light up the torch and then you realize you are in a mine and you have to find somehow you have to find a way out of that mine. You can move around if you click errors that you have for navigation right here. You can explore different objects that are present on the scenes by just clicking on them and you can pick up the objects, put them into your backpack and then use them later on when you have to solve a certain puzzle like this one here. There's an object and you cannot get past it so you're gonna have to find some kind of a tool to actually remove it and then move on. It's really fascinating that this was created with only CSS. So let's explore the code for this adventure game a little bit. And as expected, there is no JavaScript whatsoever. There is about 300 lines of HTML or rather HAML, which is actually generated to a lot more HTML because there are a number of loops here and some logic. There are also some images here that are used throughout the game as assets. Let's explore CSS. And SAS was used to create this and there is actually 15 or 1600 lines of SAS here. And what I've noticed is that Jamie actually uses quite a lot of mixins here to create interactive objects. And if we find one of those mixins, you're gonna see here's a traverse, which actually, according to comment, allows you to traverse through scenes. And you're gonna see that there is a lot of logic here with the number of for loops, calculations and whatnot. So it's quite fascinating that this was done only with CSS or rather with SAS. Next up, we have Pure CSS SVG Tic-Tac-Toe by J. Hay Tompkins. And this is a simple tic-tac-toe game, but it's really nicely done. It has beautiful imagery. And as you would expect, you can win or lose the game. So let's see how it was made. There is no JavaScript as expected. Bug is used to generate HTML. And in CSS, let's see, there is not a lot of CSS, actually only 270 lines. So this actually shows us that you can create a lot of interesting interactive things if you just know your way around CSS. There are a number of checkboxes here and the checkboxes are almost always in CSS games used to add interactivity and logic appears to be written exactly with those checkboxes. For example, here are the winning combos and when one of these conditions is met, then the game will result in a victory for one side or another. All right. Next up, we have CSS only retro dungeon maze puzzle by Takane Ichinose. I hope I pronounced it right. And this is another adventure game that you're gonna be navigating with the mouse cursor. So once you click and understand the initial setup, the initial story, you can move around the maze and you can try to find your way out of that particular maze. I just picked up the key and I can move around and actually see where this maze takes me or where is actually the way out of that maze. Let's see the code. Again, bug was used for HTML. Of course, there's no JavaScript, only comments are written here. And there's not so much CSS as you would expect, only 300 and something lines. And again, checkboxes are used to create interactivity. And according to code, there are even monsters in that maze. So be very careful when you're exploring around so you don't end up, well, eaten. Anyway, let's see a little bit more. And again, we can see with a good reason that the SAS is used here with the for loops. So whenever you're adding some kind of a complex interactivity, SAS might be a good idea to explore because it allows you to create a lot of things that might be a little bit more complicated, a little bit more difficult with only CSS. Next game is going to be Wolfenstein 3D. And this is actually classic 3D shooter recreated with a pure CSS with the intention to make it work in email clients. So this game not only works in a browser with pure CSS, it also works in email clients. Just really, really fascinating and really fantastic work by Mark Robbins. You can navigate it using the mouse cursor and controls available right here. You can turn around, you can move forward or sideways and you can fire if you just click somewhere. And according to code, those controls should also work with the W, S, A and D keys, but I couldn't get that to work. Let's see around. And if you step here, you're gonna see that there are a number of enemies here. You can shoot them. Hope it's not too violent for you. Let's see how it was made again. 
there is no JavaScript here. And here's an explanation that you can use access keys, but I couldn't get that to work. I don't know if that's related to CodePen or something else. If you have any kind of insight into that or why this isn't working, please let me know in the comments and I'll be really grateful. There's not a lot of HTML here and there is not a lot of CSS here as well, only 600 lines. And from all the demos we've seen until now, it just really tells me that you don't really need that much to create something interactive, to create something incredibly impressive using only CSS. Next, we have a pure CSS puzzle by Ben Evans. And here you have to create a lighthouse and you actually have only a limited amount of time to do so, about 400 seconds, if I understand correctly. I really love the style on this one. It's beautifully created. It's really stylish and I really think it's absolutely incredible that this was created with only CSS. Let's dig into the code a little bit, right? As expected, no JavaScript here. And for HTML, we're gonna see a number of checkboxes and radio buttons that are used to add interactivity, quite a lot of those actually. And altogether, not too many lines of code here. Let's see CSS. Again, SAS is used, there's a timer here, you have 400 seconds to complete the puzzle. And there is actually quite a lot of code here, 7,000 lines. As stated in the comment right here, there's no artificial colors or ingredients, which actually means that you won't find any images here. Every asset here is created with pure CSS all imagery, everything was built from scratch using only CSS. Absolutely incredible and fascinating work by Ben Evans. Make sure to check it out yourself and try to solve the puzzle before the time runs out as it appears to be running out right here in this case for me. And lastly, we have another pure CSS puzzle game adventure by Jamie Coulter again called The Caretaker. This one is really impressive and really well done. Again, you're gonna see a story and you're gonna have to go through that story, solve this mystery. So if anybody showed me this game without any context, I would never in a million years say that this was made by pure CSS, but it really actually is. It feels great, has very distinct style to it really love how this was done. A fantastic work by Jamie Coulter, an expert in creating CSS adventure or puzzle games. Let's see the code. And again, there is no JavaScript here as expected. Hamel is used to generate HTML. There's a lot to digest here, so they can do it yourself if you're interested. And for CSS, if you read the comment, this CSS was actually too big to be included in CodePen. So it had to be included as an external asset, which is absolutely incredible and insane if you ask me. There's actually a one megabyte of CSS and you can find the generated CSS here. Let's see. <laughs> there is absolutely incredible amount of input elements right here. Let me zoom this in. It's absolutely insane that this was created and that somebody took time to build something as complex, as ridiculously impressive as this. And here's the pre-processed SAS version, which might look a little bit more digestible. So let's see this, here it is. And as you can see, Again, there's a number of mixings here. A lot of logic is created using SAS and there is almost 2000 lines of code right here. It's absolutely stunning and incredible that people take their time to create something as impressive using only CSS. I hope this video inspires you to create something yourself. And if you ever do, please send me a link. You can send me a link on a Twitter at CSS Weekly. You can send me a link on the website, cssweekly.com and just look for this in the link navigation item. And most of all, play those games, explore them and see for yourself what is all possible using CSS these days. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Zoran Nyambor. I will see and hear you in the next game or rather the next video.